All right, here we are. Okay, so welcome back squad. Today we are doing some live trading, all right? So we're jumping on BitMEX. We are gonna rock some trades and hopefully the market fluctuates uh, in a way that is beneficial for us. Now, I just wanna make sure that everything is set up and then I'm gonna try uh, multiple screens here, but I got my graphs, I got BitMEX up, I got the live ticker and then I'm gonna play some music. So I'll have that music going for an hour, and then once that music stops, I will end the live stream. So with that said, let's jump into it. Okay, trading, there we go. All right, now let's start the music. Okay, everything seems to look good on my side, so let's do this. So I will get this out of the way. And the first place that we want to start, of course, as always, is charting. All right, so we start off in trading view. So first off, what exactly is going on? So we have an hour graph. Let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so we're basically hitting the support line here. So with this being our support line, it's going to be questionable whether we hit underneath it and we go back here or we sit up top here. Because as you can see, we got that price rise from the bottom and we went right up here to the same line of support here. So now it's questionable whether it's going to go down or it's going to continue to go up. So what indicators do we have to help us assist in a decision? Well, we have our RSI indicators right here. So we're getting closer to the top. As you can see... When we touched right about here, when we got close to, when we touched right here, we saw a major drop off. Okay, so now that was extremely beneficial in regards to a trade um, for us. That would have been fantastic. Now, what indicators do we see here on the MACD? Well, as we can see, the price is, according to this, going to continue to rise, but we may be looking at a cross pretty soon here and a downturn. So. With that said, what does the Bitcoin ticker say? Well, let's take a look. We'll zoom out here and see what's going on. So as you can see, we have this decent trading range actually, it's not bad. So if we just zoom out here, we can see that about 54 coins leaves us uh, at about 57.15 for a price and it's 5,700 right now. So about 50 coins takes us to 57.15. And what does 50 coins do for us about here? 56.90. So 10 bucks on the buy side, 15 bucks on the sell side. Okay. Let's go back over here. Hmm. All right, well, let's uh, let's go back to BitMEX and let's establish our trades and our stop losses. All right. So, as you can see, I have my available funds here. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, as you can see here, I have my available funds and I'm gonna be doing some trading. Now, uh, just one moment here. Let's establish our position. So what I like to do for a position size is I like to do about one and a half percent. So one and a half percent, and then I can kind of go from there um, based on my portfolio. So first off, I'm gonna go to a limit order here and basically decide if I wanna establish my position. So we're at 5,700 here, and I'll just be doing uh, XBT to USD perpetual contract. I'm not doing anything crazy here. Um, I may jump into Ethereum. We will see. So first off, I'm going to change my contract size to 7,000 USD. And I'm going to figure out what my limit price should be. Do we see a major price rise happening? Well, according to the hour indicator, it's going to continue to rise. According to the 15 minute indicator, it's going to cross over and probably rise a bit more. So I'm going to establish a long 
at 57.04. Shit. Yeah, see? There we go. There's that rise. <laughs> but does it continue to go up? Let's, let's just get in there. Because now the thing about this position is you have a technique called cost averaging, right? So say I buy long at 57.06. Um, I can always cost average it if the price ends up going down and not in my favor because I have a very small position size. Now the next thing that we want to establish is a stop loss. So stop market, um, we're going to stop at about 56.80. Okay, so that'll be my set sell stop. Yep, looks good. Okay, so now, basically, if the price goes down to 57, or sorry, 56.80, it will close my position for me. All right, so as we can see, the trade is going in our favor, and um, with the trade fees, we're actually down $5 by just establishing our trade. So to establish our trade, it costed us $5. So now we want our profit ratio to be, I like to say at least double um, for the fee. So if the fee is $5, then I like my profit uh, ratio to be two times the fee, at the, at the very least, the, the very minimum. Okay, so I just want to stress that because as you can see right now, this is the profit I will realize if I close my position, but that profit has to be subtracted from my fee, right? And then that will indicate my realized PL. So as you can see, uh, if I close my trade right now, it's about $4. My fee is about $5. So I'm not making profit. I'd be losing a dollar by canceling my trade right now. So I'm going to wait and we're going to see where this goes. Now, as you can see here, um, we're going to probably see a crossover and the price is going to increase probably in the next 15 minutes. That's what I'm projecting. Now, if we change it up and we go to about one hour. We can see that the price is continuing to increase and we haven't hit the signal line on the MACD yet, which means that the price should continually grow in the next hour. And I say should based on the technical indicators, okay guys? Now I also want to state that none of this is financial advice. This is me just trading and speaking openly, opening up my mind and just talking about everything that I'm doing here. I'm going to try to do this for an hour. <laughs> Now, as you can see for the RSI indicator here, we haven't we haven't hit the top. We haven't hit the top and we're starting to see this kind of trend going upwards to about here, right? So now if we get to a, to about here or maybe just a bit shy of that, I probably close my trade um, because that would be enough of an increase uh, for me. That would bring us up to approximately 5730 and we established our trade at about uh, 5706, okay? So that would be a decent amount of profit. That would not be bad. Now, what does Bitcoin ticker say? Look at this resistance here, this uh, sell order resistance. So what this indicates here is the amount of resistance on the buy side and the sell side, right? So now there is a lot more Bitcoin to buy at this or at, at about the 5726 range so so the the buy orders have to eat through this in order for the price of bitcoin to go up to 5730 and we're seeing it so this is good this is good so here we go so there's a ten dollar profit so this is literally double my fee already so what i could do is 
if I wanted to make that money right now, or that Bitcoin, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, is I could close my trade right now and I would make $10 minus my fee, so I'd make about $5. Oh, <laughs> that guy just got liquidated out of 65,000 contracts and one contract is worth $1 and he just got liquidated. That's uh, that's rough. That is a, that's a hard day. Yeah. Okay. Now with 5717 on the line, I'm going to try to close out of this trade. Done. Okay. So right there, I made about $6, something like that. But a very, I'm, I made a very small amount, but I want to show you guys that this is possible. Now, what I could do right now is I could open a short, right? I could short at 57.13 and hopefully it continues to go down. Is that likely? Not according to, not according to the charts. So let's look at the 15 minute. See now, there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a bit of a cross here, so we may see it continually go up. Oh, that's the 15. That's the 15. Let's look at the 30. You can see they're kind of they're kind of neck and neck. They haven't really crossed right here in the 30 minute chart, but it is near. Like it's getting near the top. Now we'll switch over to the hour, and there's still a bit of room here, so. Hmm. Let's uh, let's see if we can get a few more scalps in before the the price supposedly rises. Okay. Fifty-seven ten. That's not bad. I would prefer it to be down closer to here. So, if I can get it closer to about fifty-seven hundred. That's where I'd probably establish another long and then watch it go up and then pull out of my trade again. So again, I started out with uh, 4,500 um, in this portfolio here on this account and I'm at 4514. But of course that changes and fluctuates with the price of Bitcoin. Hmm. How's Ethereum doing? Let's take a quick look at Ethereum. Look at this massive price rise we saw with Ethereum. Like that's that's pretty that's pretty decent. That's not bad. So <laughs> it went from 168 to 174. If you had contracts on that position, say like um, 14,000 contracts, for instance, you're killing it on that price rise if you bought long. Like that that's decent. That's like two thousand dollars in profit or something at, at least probably which is not bad so I'm wondering if we'll see another dip another dip down here because we saw this and we saw this I don't know though MACD does not lie hmm Hmm. 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 Gotta keep an eye on these. You gotta constantly check them, especially if you're scalping. Five minutes too short of a frame, but I just like to see. I think, like, I don't think. We may see 57.30 again, and if we could establish a short there, that would be uh, that would be ideal. That would be amazing. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna see that again. I think we're gonna see another sharp drop, if anything. So, what I think we're gonna do. 
I think we're gonna establish a short once the price goes up a little bit more. I think we uh, we should definitely establish a short here. So 57.13 is not bad. If we can get that a little bit higher, I think we should establish uh, establish a short. 57.18. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So we're getting closer now. You know what? If we can If we can get 15, let's short at 15. If we can get 15, we'll hold that position. Let's see where this goes. Ooh, the price is going up on the ticker. I don't know. Let's take a look. Yeah, 57.15. Hmm. See, now the thing is, when I see this, when I look at the ticker, and I see this straight up trend on the sell side, what that tells me is that there's higher resistance here, and the odds that the buy orders chew this up are less. I don't know if we'll see 15 on BitMEX. You know what? Let's just take 14. <laughs> Let's take 14. Let's do it now. Let's just do it. Let's establish it. Let it roll. See where she goes. You gotta you gotta be on top of it. You gotta be on top of that. So again, five dollars to establish that trade. Now let's see what exactly happens. According to the sell orders here, you know, a lot of the market, seven million contracts worth in on BitMEX are thinking that the price will go down. So I mean That is interesting. And sometimes, sometimes it's just one person with a lot of money or they're running bots or whatever. But you know what? It is an indicator that I like to use in conjunction with several other indicators at the same time, right? Because it helps a lot. Like, like you'd be, uh, you'd be pretty surprised. Okay, let's go back up here. See what's going on. So we we actually saw it touch here on the 30 minute uh, 30 minute chart. We saw the signal line touch and wow. Okay. If this blue line goes below this uh, the signal line, that price is going down. That would be nice right now. And this straight up straight up line on the sell side, it's uh it's helping us. I mean, even if we could get to about here, so 56.84, that would be that would be pretty good, and not be bad. All right, let's maximize this and uh, look at the 15 minute real quick. Okay, all right, all right. So it's actually getting closer to the signal line here. So there might be a price rise in the next little bit. Let's go to the one hour. And I guess I, I guess we're just going to have to see. We're going to have to play this out and see where she goes. Jump back on BitMEX. There we go. Get that price down. Let's go. 5709. There's five bucks. So if we cash out our trade right now, we'd basically break even. We need this to go down more though. We need this to go down a bit more. Hmm. I'm wondering. Yeah, we entered at 57.14 now. No, there's no. So, I'll give you guys a tip right now. 
One of the things that I like to do when I am cost averaging my trades is I like to um, cost average when there's at least about a $20 gap between my positions. So right now I have a short established and I'm basically wagering that the price will continue to go downward. Well, what happens if the price goes upward? Well, I start losing Bitcoin based on that trade, right? Now, technically, you don't lose Bitcoin until you close your position, but that is the central idea. Now, if the price goes up about $20 or whatever, I'll put another 7,000 contracts down and wager that the price will continue to go down. Now, what that does is that ups my entry price and it negates some of those losses. And it also gives me the opportunity to be closer to the current price of the asset. So it helps. So as you can see, if I close my position, I'd be up like four bucks. It's decreasing. I kind of thought it would a little bit in the short term, in the short term, guys. Okay. This is all short term trading. So $10 right here. That's the unrealized PL. The cost of the of establishing the trade was five dollars. So if I cancel it right now, I get another five dollars. So if you're in the States, you could hit up Duncan's right now with those profits. If you're in Canada, hit up that Timmy's. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm gonna close this trade. 5705, I think. 06 maybe. It's so small, but but you know what? This is the art of scalping, right? This is the art of scalping. So we're going to close it out. So there, the trade's out. And we made about five bucks or so on that trade. Now, hold up. I'm just going to make sure that I have live, um, live comments going here. <laughs> what's up guys welcome to the live stream now let me get this real quick here i'm just gonna expand this window out so i can read the live comments as we go along all right so gamer clausen yes i do know you C camille btc is a tease pump that would be nice that would definitely be nice you don't see us hitting 6k huh well, you know what? There's always potential there. I will say uh, WRST. There is potential. Okay, I'm not going to lie. You don't understand the power of the dark side, boy. Oh, okay. So you can enable uh, BitMEX in USD if you have access to the plugin files, which um, I actually have a link and uh, to them because of a trader. His name is Flood, and he's on Twitter. So I'd definitely give him a follow, uh, WRST, if uh, if you jump on Twitter regularly, because he actually has the plugin on his um, tweet history, and you can download it there, and it's freaking sweet, I will say. All right. Now. Just pop that in there real quick. So 5703. Now, what do we want to do? Let's take a look. So we pop over to scene two, expand this, see what's going on. So we'll check the 15. So again, there is potential still for this to go down a little bit more. Check the 30 minute. It's just crossing, it's crossing. Now if that blue line goes under that yellow line, we are in a good zone for a nice short. And the hour, what does that look like for us? It's still there, like a price rise is still, you know, kind of imminent in the next hour, but we're not going to be trading for, you know, an hour from now. We're going to be trading for like another 40, 45 minutes or so. So with that in mind, let's use a 45 minute and see what's going on. Now the RSI is getting eh, kind of closer to the top, but there's still some room, but there's more room downward, which indicates that we may see 
this bottom again at 5677. That would be nice for a short right now. You know what? Let's um Let's establish a short. Do another one. Hello, how do you make USD to show in USD funds? Um, there is a plugin again. Uh, his name is Flood, my dude. His name is Flood. Now, if I helped you guys out, you know, be sure hit me up on the channel here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know what? If you if you guys want, I can. Um, just one second. Let me get this. Let me get this. Hold up. I will uh, fire you guys a link in chat right now. I'll pull it up on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem. I'll help you out. Okay, hold up. Let me get this. I gotta go way back for this, dude. <laughs> this guy tweets so much, he's gotta slow his roll. I'm pulling it up. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going... This is going a bit back. Holy mac. Okay, hold up. Okay, yeah, I got you. All right, uh, USD converter tool for BitMEX. There you guys go. I got your back. All right. Okay, now let me change this. So as you can, so check this out. Check this out. All right. So now on the chart here, you can see we're hitting that big drop off. Now there is potential for a major catastrophic drop because we're we're touching this again, and we could see another drop to about here. This support line, there's a little bit of support there, but if we see a nice drop like this again, woo, it's a happy day. It is a happy day. We're gonna buy an Oculus Rift, you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know. There, there definitely is potential here. We established our position at 5702. As you can see down here, our entry price, and we were trading at a uh, with a value of 1.22 Bitcoin. So now again, we could see that that nice, beautiful price drop. That would be amazing right now. Look at this. Look at these sell orders. Holy smokes! Everybody on the sell train. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I see it happening, but it would be nice. Not gonna lie. But there, are, again, there is room on the uh, the RSI indicator there. So maybe you never know. It's coming back. I need 5724. <laughs> that would be nice, right? 5724 would literally be the tops here. Ish. Right? That would be nice. Can I ask you one thing? Yes. You can ask me whatever you like. Vitus. You can ask me whatever you like, man. That's what these live streams are all about. You got questions. I answer them. We trade. 
and we have a good time. That's what it's all about, man. Fire away. I'm going to need more coffee soon. Come on, price drop. Let's go. We're going to see a tank here soon. It's just going to... It's going to tank down. We're going to see a nice drop real quick here, I think. I think I'm going to establish another short. Mm -hmm. So now we're 10 bucks down because of fees. Let's hope we uh, we see that nice drop. We might, we might see it back down here-ish. Probably my favorite live stream. <laughs> Man, I wish I got more recognition for things like this. <laughs> unfortunately that is not the case but you know what it's okay the more frequently you do something the more uh, appreciation uh, builds as long as you do it good right it's all about the quality come on if we just get that nice drop oh buddy let's go let's go but I mean you know what if we do see that drop we may see it come back Right, so I, I really want you guys to know that because in the next 15 minutes to half an hour, we may see a nice price drop, but it may resurge as well because the hour MACD is actually totally different than the 15 minute or the 30 minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you exactly what I am talking about and why I think things will go where they're gonna where they may go. <laughs> Such a like tongue twister. Um, okay, so let's change it up. So let's look at the hour. So according to the hour chart, we may see um, a little more of a price rise based on the MACD and the RSI here. So there is room to the to to get near the top. All right. Now, if you look at the MACD, they haven't crossed yet, which indicates that the price may steadily rise um, over this next time period. Now, if we change it up and we go to a 30 minute, we can see that they're kind of crossing. So when this blue line touches the signal line, um, it indicates that there is potential for a cross, in which case the blue signal line drops um, below uh, the orange or red line and the price goes down. Okay, and as you can see, I think there's a, a, a bit higher of a likelihood that the price is gonna go down short term. Now, if we look at even shorter term, you can see there's, it. it's still, doing a downward trend in the 15 minute so we shall see let's go back bah what's up look at these sell orders that's heavy 5.7 mil let's go bring that down 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 and then a resurgence let's go Okay, let me read this. How do you find the new liquidation price after averaging in? That, you know what, that's um that's a great question, Camille. I'll answer that and then I will go back to Vitus's question. So now explaining this may be a little bit interesting, but let's say you establish your initial position like we did here at let's say 5710. Okay, then I want a cost average and the price is now 5750 and I buy in at 5750. Well, as long as I buy in at the same contract size, so my initial contract size was 7,000 units at 5710. Now I buy 7,000 contracts at 5750. Well, how do you know what your entry price is and your liquidation price, right? Well, the entry price will be half of the difference between 5710 and 5750. So, whatever that is, um, will add to your entry, okay? Now, your liquidation price um, is actually also the same. So, whatever your liquidation price was before um, will basically cut in half because you're establishing uh, another contract size at 57.50 or whatever it ends up being. I'd have to write it down to explain it properly, I think. Because explaining it in the video with numbers, like, things get lost in translation. But. <laughs> yeah, so here, here is that price rise that I was talking about. 
I kind of saw this coming in the in the longer term here. But will it hold? I don't know. We'll have to see. Now, off to Vitus' question. Let's check this out. Okay, so I had 50 times ROE, was plus 40%, and above 0 0.08 XBT. And PL was plus 0 0.007 after I closed. I got above negative 20% of investment. Okay, yeah, so that has to deal with the fees and also the mark price and the, the um, actual BitMEX price of the asset. So I, I know... I know exactly what you're saying because a lot of traders make this exact mistake, okay? Now, when you jump into BitMEX, you have to look here. So, if I close my position right now, okay, um, I'm out $6 based on the BitMEX price of the asset, okay? So, now the BitMEX price of the asset is 5703 but the mark price is 5701 okay? So now if I close at mark price, right now, I lose $2. But I can't close at mark price because the BitMEX price isn't the mark price. You see what I'm saying? Like, I hope that makes sense. But anyways. Anyways. Um, that's what it comes down to. So if, you, if the BitMEX price of the asset is higher than the mark price, then you'll be closing your position probably at a loss depending on if you establish a short or a long so anyways how do you determine if your trade is profitable once you close your trade well i'll tell you so when you hover over your trade here it will tell you what your PL will be by closing uh at the order book so you can see if i close my trade right now it's negative nine dollars okay and then if you hover over here, it will tell you um, what your profit is uh, once you close your trade. So your trade or the profit for your entire trading session, if that makes sense. It's kind of a, <laughs> it's so weird to explain a little bit, <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, this is this is what you got to take away from it when you hover over your unrealized p l and you see your percentage or your value that is what you will receive or lose when you close your trade at the current price of the asset which is located here but when you're not hovering over it shows the mark price well it works it out for the mark price so sometimes there's a major lag between the mark price and the BitMEX price. I've seen a gap of like $50. So a $50 gap for uh, between the mark price, which is located here, and the BitMEX price. So that's the thing. That's, that's what I really wanted to get out there. And the other thing... Your question is actually very interesting, uh, Vitus, because um, you had a 50 times leverage trade, right? Oh, oh no, 50 times ROE. Yeah, okay. So whatever leverage your trade was, it actually um, increases the fee when you establish your position. So that's the other thing you have to realize. When you uh, close your trade, it subtracts your fee um, from what you have on there. When closing limit, Arthur takes 0 0.0025 market close. He takes 0 0.0675. What's the difference between cross and one times? Um, you know what? That is um, an interesting question. And the answer is that cross allows you to establish positions on multiple different contracts okay so so say I wanted to establish on Bitcoin XBT and then I wanted to establish on Cardano and then I wanted to have another trade going on Ethereum well with cross you can do that and then your leverage will adjust um, based on where the price goes and where you established your position 
okay so that's what cross is if you go one times leverage uh it doesn't adjust your leverage and i'm i'm pretty sure that you can't establish positions on other contracts i could be wrong on that though um but yeah essentially cross is better if you're trading on multiple different contracts it's it's much better for that uh i find anyways but again your leverage scales based on where the trade goes if the trade like if it's profitable for you or it's not as profitable the leverage will scale up and down so if you want that functionality it helps um i personally prefer that because it's better for trading on multiple contracts um if you do one times it's good i mean it's a it's a good way to some people like hedge their assets that way instead of trading into tether they'll just trade um by doing one times leverage because they can do that too right instead of taking their money out and then going to uh to tether that works too okay guys we're running low on coffee here there's not that much we're gonna have to go get some more soon Hmm. But we're hitting this resistance line. We're hitting this uh this 5700 and it's not liking going beneath that right now. It'd be nice if we went down here. I think we'll see that. I think we'll see that again in the uh in the short term i think we'll see another drop off i'd say probably in the next hour or so to about 56 75 i think we'll see it again yeah so anyways um wrst i hope that answers your question <laughs> i believe uh btc ready to retouch 5500 I mean it could happen it could definitely happen um, if we look at the MACD here we and, and the RSI indicators we could definitely take a look um, I mean there there is potential for these things to happen very very fast especially in this market over the past few days we, we saw Bitcoin go from 5500 to 5800 in like a matter of minutes it's been crazy the last month in crypto has just been mental it's been off the freaking charts you know so it wouldn't surprise me i'll tell you guys straight up i got scared when i saw the the wick uh two weeks ago i was like man right i'll show you guys the exact wick that i was talking about so zoom out here i'll have to move that back after It was this wick right here on May 4th. Yeah, that was May 4th. Is it? Let me check this real quick. Hold up. Yeah, May. Was it May 4th? I don't know. Let me go to the three hour. No, it wasn't that wick. It was this wick. Oh, buddy. That scared. This thing scared me, dude. So, look at this. So. 5496 all the way down to here like five grand basically like man i think i almost deuced my pants when i saw this and look at the rsi it touched the bottom it touched the bottom and, and then it kind of came back and it bounced back up above but i took my my bitcoin out of bitmex when this happened like i was like no sir bob i'm out of there so anyways um you gotta be careful in this market is there potential for it to hit 55 again absolutely it's um it's been it's touched twice right so can it go there again yeah it's a pretty realistic expectation generally what i find i'll, I'll tell you guys this is um i don't know i guess a trader secret but um generally what i find is these larger wicks when they hit 
I see them get about cut in half, and that appears to be the bottom a lot of the time. So you won't see a full retracement uh, pretty quickly after you get a large green wick. I mean, if we look back at the trends, you'll see that. It's actually kind of weird. But half of this wick usually gets cut, and then that's that ends up being the bottom. So as you can see here... At about half of that green wick, we see the bottom, and then we see a retracement shortly thereafter. And that seems to be a pretty consistent thing. So, it's kind of interesting. So, let's look for another large green wick. Look at this. Half of the wick, right here, it stops. So, half of the green wick, it comes back down. And as you can see, it stopped. And then it came back. So... It's kind of a neat thing. If you see it quickly, you kind of know where to establish your positions or how to establish them. Because it's it's kind of a consistent thing. Now, don't expect it every time. But it's something to keep in mind. Make sure that you're, you're still within your um, RSI safe range. And also make sure that the MACD lines up with that projection. Because it's not always accurate. But it is kind of interesting. So, there you have it. Oh, 13 bucks up, but our trading fee is $10. So we're only up $3 right now if we cancel our trade. We need that to go down a little more yet. We should um, set a buy stop. What, 57.20? I think, um, and we'll go 14,000 contracts. So now I, I want to explain a very, very, Im oh, sorry. I'll, okay, I'll answer this question. What I have seen from my chart is it happens in two to three days but like you mentioned this period are very crazy. Yeah, absolutely, man. Things Things are mental. Um, lately in this market we could see like a $600 drop in a in a day you know and then that's when everybody shits the bed like literally it's not even it's not even a joke even but <laughs> let's uh let's talk let's talk facts here all right now when you trade on bitmex okay there is this very fundamental and important step that i want you all to know and I learned this the hard way when I started out training is set your stop losses okay because you will you will get stopped out um, if, uh, if you don't and that's good if you get if it's better than getting liquidated <laughs> so anyways what I'm gonna talk to you about is protection all right and I'm not talking condoms so we have a short established 14,000 contracts, okay, at 5,700. Now, I have a, a stops category here, which basically states that I will buy 14,000 contracts at 5,720. So now, if the price of Bitcoin goes to 5,720, my position here will be instantly closed. I'll lose a little bit of Bitcoin, but if the price goes to like... 6,000, I won't lose much because it will close my trade at 5720. So it's like, it's like wearing armor when you trade on BitMEX. It protects you from being liquidated. Now, what a liquidation is, is when you lose everything in your portfolio because uh, the price did not go the way you wanted to, wanted it to go or that you bet it would go. Okay. So. Yeah, so, okay, so yeah, so Vitus, you're, you're suggesting 57.30, 57.40. Absolutely. I'm okay with it stopping a little little low, though, uh, because then at that point, I'll check the MACD, I'll check the charts, and see where it's going to go short term, and then I'll open another scalp at that point, and then I can determine where things will go in my, my safe range. Yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying, 57.40 and why. Yeah. I'm I'm okay with 57.20. We'll 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 see what happens. Right here. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Whew. 
Okay, okay guys, I am going to grab another cup of coffee. As you can see, we're fresh out. All right, so I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, and we are back. All right, so now where are we at? Wow, look at this, hey? Our mark price here is 56.93. If we closed our trade at 56.95 now, $13 profit. Minus the fees, $10, so $3 profit. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> We're trying to afford donuts, boys. We want to get these donuts. Come on. So if we close now, approximately, we'd break even. Let's go down. We need that price to go down a little bit yet, all right? Okay. Let's check back on the MACDs and the RSI indicators here real quick. Ooh, okay. All right. So, as we can see here, we are going to go to the 15-minute indicators. Trend is the price is going to go down for the next 15 minutes approximately, hopefully. If we get down to about here, maybe, that would be nice. Now, what does ticker say? What does the ticker say? We still got some room here. We could probably hit another... 100 Bitcoin would be nice and get 5670. That'd be all right. I'll take it. But as far as things going up, this line is still relatively straight. So which indicates a lot of resistance. What's the purpose of funding? Ah, okay. That's a really interesting question. Hold up. Hold up. All right. So, um, what funding is, is it's, um, it's a transfer of funds on the BitMEX platform for, uh, longs and shorts. So now if I understand it correctly, long positions. So if I open a position now and I say Bitcoin is going to go up, um, I pay a fee every six hours, 10 hours, whatever it is, um, to pay shorts for holding their positions because the likelihood of Bitcoin going down in price in the very long term is small, <laughs> right? So that's the idea of that. It gives you an incentive to open short positions, a little more of an incentive. So long positions pay short positions. All right, that's how it goes. Now, uh, if since I have a short established here, um, let's let's take a look here. More details. Here you go. XPT USD is a perpetual contract. Each is worth a dollar. Funding is paid and received every eight hours. So it's eight hours. There you go. That's better. Today, 
Longs will receive zero point blah, and shorts will pay. So, okay, so it, it changes. So there you go, we're both learning today. Um, yeah, so I guess it changes based on where the market is at and what the likelihood on their side is of the asset going down or up. And then that determines which positions pay uh, and then which positions receive. So today, longs receive. So the likelihood of the price rising more is less. Um, that's Bit BitMEX's assessment, as I understand. So the likelihood that the price will drop seems to be higher. If I understand that correctly. So the answer is... It changes based on the day and funding basically gives you more of an incentive to establish and hold a position um, for a longer period of time that makes sense <laughs> okay so profit here if I close this position is $18 minus the fees which are $10 um, I would make like eight dollars eight dollars hot diggity dog buy me another thing of coffee yo that's it going to the bank buying a Porsche made eight dollars today <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> 18 bucks look at this look at these sell orders let's go <laughs> And we still got room. We still got room on the charts here, boys. We still got room here. Check it. What's up? 15 minute. Ooh, we're going down, 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 buddy. RSI going down. MACD going down. Oh, it's going down. Shit. Let's take a look at that, boys. Oh, $25 minus $10 is $15. Let's get it. Everybody want to get it. Everybody wanna get it. <laughs> Turn into an auctioneer right here. It doesn't take much to get you excited, you know what I'm saying? Oof. Oof. Did he call the drop? Did he call the drop? I think he called the drop. Shit. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. All right. Okay, so this is a decent time to probably close position. Um Ooh, which way is she gonna go? I mean, these guys still think it's gonna continue to go down. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna close this position, I think. I don't know how much room we got. Well, we do still have some room here because we're kind of hitting the bottom of this green wick, as you can see. We're kind of getting close to hitting the bottom of this. And then at that point, it's either a free fall or it, it starts resurging and correcting itself back to the top of this wick. So it can go either way right now. So I can say that this is the bottom and fire out of this trade, or I can wait for it and see if it's gonna free fall, okay? So this is, this is an interesting moment right now and we really gotta captivate it. I'm gonna wait you know what I'm gonna wait for the free fall I'm gonna wait for the free fall rate rate to about here 5680 I think we might see it close 5681 or 82 as if you said that when I said that that is awesome that's amazing hot all the short right I mean you have to yeah you, you, you just you gotta okay so you know what let's rock I'm I'm really feeling this. I'm really feeling it right about here. Oh boy, here we come. Here we here we go. Oh. Okay, let's go 5682. Let's go 5682 on this. Oh boy. Make a few bucks on You know, the interesting thing about this is live trading on BitMEX pays me more generally than YouTube. Those, those are happy days. And on top of that, it's fun. I get to hang out with all the bros. 
At this rate, you will get wrecked. Why are you wiping tears of joy from your eyes from your win moments before? <laughs> I would hire you as my exchange ambassador. Oh, thank you so much. At this rate, I will get wrecked. No. I don't think so. That's why you set your stop losses, bro. Mr. Mister, Mister Squiggle, you gotta have your armor on for this shit. You gotta protect yourself from the Bitmex lords, man. They'll fucking eat you up, and there's no question about it. These guys are ruthless and relentless. So, as long as you have your stop losses set, it's all good. Have a party. Get it. But you know what? Um... I think we still want to try for 56, 5682 maybe. Uh, 31 bucks. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going to close, boys. We're going to close a little higher than average maybe. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, we are not quick enough. We are not quick enough. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be quick enough on this. 91? 90.5? Ah, oh, shit. Man, this is touchy. I don't know. It is still profit. It's still profit. Let's go. We out. We out. We close in with the fifteen dollar profit, boys. You, you, sometimes you just you gotta you gotta call it. Bitmex Lord at work. Hmm? Well done. No panic. All good here. They watching you, Bitmex Lords at work. You know what? That may potentially be. That may potentially be, but you know what? You can never be wrong with taking a profit. You, there is potential to lose um, profit if the price continues to go downward, but never. I, I tell people this all the time, never feel bad for taking profit, okay? Because um, at least you didn't lose a major amount of your funds. You didn't take a negative, so you're doing good. You gotta take the W, you know? You got to take the W. Man, guys, I am getting a lot of phone calls right now. I'm not going to lie. Get off BitMEX. What are you doing on BitMEX? Stop gambling. Hey, look, I'm not gambling, all right? There is a lot of technical indicators in this situation, all right? You could call it a job. It's like a job. I'm at work, y'all. It is what it is. Okay, let's take a look. What is going on with the charts here? So we are 56, 88. All right, on the live ticker. Now, what is going on here with the MACDs, my boys? All right. So as we can see, we it looks like the price is going to continue to go down. Our blue line is below our signal line. And the RSI is in about the middle. So, so it can go either way, actually. The price can just jolt up or the price can continue to go down. Now, what does the 30 minute look like? 30 minute is crossing, so it's gonna continue to go down, actually. Interesting, okay. And the hour? It looks like it might meet up. Both of these lines might meet up later on and then the price will continue to decrease. Hmm. So holding that short would have been a solid, solid thing to do, I think, based on that. But again, we can't hate on it for taking profit. We got to take that profit, all right? You just got to hold it down like a champ and stomach the profit. All right. With that said, guys, we have closed our positions. We're a clean slate. We made a few bucks. And on top of that... We have just started 
the BitMEX live trading train. Will I do this again? Absolutely. Um, will I do it tomorrow? There's a high likelihood. But if you guys want to see more live trading, I'll tell you guys straight up. Subscribe and keep an eye out because I'll be on this. I'll be trading. You guys will get the notifications and then we can dive into this again. All right. So I hope you guys had a blast during this session and you guys learned a little bit here and there. Um, I'm learning from you guys. You guys are learning from me. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and it is a blast hanging out. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, stay regular. I will catch you guys in the next one.